Welcome to Behind the Muscle Podcast. Today's guest is an online coach and muscle therapist. Today's guest is Taylor Plaza. Taylor, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I was looking forward to this. I'm really excited. For, for sure, man. So I'm excited to chop it up with you. Uh, you're just fresh off a competition this last weekend. We're definitely going to get into that. Um, you, you, you're a muscle therapist. You work uh, uh, on a lot of top athletes at a pure muscle. So definitely looking forward to the conversation. I'd like to start each podcast, Taylor, off by asking all of my guests, who are a few of your favorite bodybuilders of all time? Of all time? Oh, well, definitely off the top of my head, uh, someone I look up to a lot is uh, Jay Cutler, um, Flex Lewis, uh, definitely the two that I, that I look up to the most. Um, in the sense of not just from what they've accomplished, but also because of their business aspect behind the scenes. Uh, that's what I aspire to do with building my business and using bodybuilding as a, uh, as a tool for that as well. So that's, those are the two that come up, come up top of my head. Obviously there's other physiques that I look up to and everything, but those are the two that are always in the back of my head, um, that I definitely always look up to. Very cool. Now, um, if I, uh, if I saw correctly on your Instagram, you were at the Dragon's Lair here at some point pretty recently. How was that? I was, you? I was about, um, about maybe like five, six weeks ago. Um, it was awesome. Just missed Jay. I mean, I just missed Flex by like a little bit. They said there was there a couple hours before, but the gym was awesome. The vibe was really cool. Uh, I always like to see like different gyms. Like uh, if, I'm, if I'm traveling, that's a, it's like a thing that I love to go check out especially a really known gym like that. So it was, it was awesome to go check it out, um, see what the hype was all about. And then, uh, but yeah, no, it was, it was really nice. I just wish I would've got to see him there and take a couple pictures. Like I've met him before, but I mean, I know he's got his, uh, his prime time that he goes to train. So. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. All right. So the second question I kind of like to ask all my guests just to kind of start our conversation, Taylor is at what age did you start lifting weights? And then why did you start lifting weights at that age? Well, uh, essentially, probably I'd say around like high school, like like uh, 17, 18, but it wasn't anything that serious at the time. I was just kind of like trying to get in shape a little bit. Um, I would say, honestly, like, I always kind of was routing out to, to into that field. I just never knew I'd eventually get into bodybuilding. Uh, I was playing like high level soccer. Uh, I, was, I was playing a lot of sports growing up. And I remember correctly, exactly, we were, I was playing high level soccer and every once a week we had, we used to call uh, mind to muscle uh, training. So we used to go to this training facility, it was more sport, uh, strength and conditioning. And that was by far my favorite day of the week. We would go there and do some weight stuff, we do some plyo stuff, jumping, anything like related to like weights. And then for some reason I was like, I love this so much. I'm like, why am I loving this more than actual like soccer practices or whatever other practices? And then I started looking into like, I, cause my dad is very old school. Uh, cause he played professional soccer. So he's very old school with like, which are going to stunt your growth and all that stuff. So I remember having to steal my mom's P90X videos and go to the basement and then like turn down the volume and do the P90X videos in the basement and slowly start to like start my own fitness thing without even knowing what I was doing like secretly. Uh, and then I'd do it at the gym at my, uh, at my high school, but it was, just, it was more so just to kind of get fit. Cause uh, you see everybody getting fit and, you know, like I, I wanted to be just like that too. Uh, but when I say like a little bit more serious, probably wasn't until like when I was 18 when I started university, uh, I started going to the gym often. Uh, I met a buddy of mine that um, he actually competed. He was a bit older than me. Uh, he competed. So he kind of got me into that world of like thinking about oh, maybe potentially one day. Um, and it kind of took off from there, taking bodybuilding a little bit more serious. And then I kind of pushed other sports on the side because it kind of got to the point that I'm like, well, I either got a game on Saturday, but I got to train with legs on Friday. I'm like, I can't do, I can't be doing both. So I started getting heavier. So I got to the point that I'm like, I put sports on the side and started pursuing a little bit more bodybuilding. Um, and then eventually I was like, you know what? I think I, I'll do, I'll do a show. Um, and then I ended up doing a show in 2017. Um, and then I got bit by the bug and, and kind of been going ever since. All right. Awesome. So um, I want to kind of get into your uh, backstory in terms of your childhood a little bit. Um, yeah. I read a little bit on your website about how you were very involved in sports, including Taekwondo. So um, talk a little bit more. And then you also just mentioned that your dad was a professional soccer player. So yeah. talk about your parents, talk about um, growing up as an athlete, 
uh, maybe talk about some of the positive points of childhood up to about high school. And then uh, we'll talk about university and all of that um, after yeah. we're done talking about the childhood. Uh, so growing up, like I said, my dad uh, played professional growing up. So it wasn't that he was he forced certain sports on us. He, he just forced um, professionalism, I guess, from a young age. And at the time, I, I like, not that I hated it, but like, you were like, why is he pushing me so much? Because I remember growing up for soccer, for Taekwondo, for whatever it is we're doing, he'd make me wake up at like five, six in the morning. We had like either a punch bag in the basement. We have like some soccer ball downstairs in the basement. He's like, go practice for an hour, go do whatever you got to do in the basement, go do your cardio in the basement before you go to school. And then, and then after school, I had my practices and all the other stuff. So I would I'd wake up in the morning, uh, even when I was uh, leading up to playing sports that he never even knew, like I played football in high school. He's like, he's like, he's like, I know shit about football. He's like, he's like, but all I know is, he's like, go practice your plays, go do your runs, go do your whatever, go, like, go get your agility. He's like, that's what I know best. He's like, go practice that. So that's something that I like, that it instilled in me when I was a young kid, like my dad was always on me for that. Uh, it, it maybe, maybe at a certain point, it maybe it might have been a little too much at, at times. Because I remember my dad was that guy at like, at any game, just standing on the sideline like this, just being a side coach, just yelling at me, whistling at me, and like I mean, like okay, don't have a coach. And then I got my dad as a coach, and I'm. It was one of those, but honestly, like having that heart on my ass all the time, like instilled that. Uh, that driving me and that like that dedication to train what, whatever sport I ended up doing I always excelled in uh, not to toot my own horn but like I, for that reason is why I got like MVP in every sport that I played in high school I got MVP in soccer basketball uh, and and football um, and then I was in taekwondo I was able to, to do uh, up to like I was a Canadian and Ontario champ in uh, in fighting um, but again that all came down from him pushing me at a young age I remember correctly I was I was 12 years old and my dad comes up to me. He starts, he grabs me by like the love handles. He starts starting to get a little chunky. He's like, we got to get your cardio up. And I'm like, I didn't know really what he meant. He's like, all right, you can start running around the neighborhood. Like did a little quick little lap. He's like, that's it. He's like, no, you got to keep running. We got to keep going. So he, he's installed me. And then it got to a point that I was just running around the neighborhood and then I was running around the town and everybody knew me as like the kid that was always running around. Uh, I, I lived in a small town at, at the time. Um, I lived in Orangeville for anyone that knows this area. Uh, I was always running around town. Everybody knew me as a kid. I was running around getting my cardio in. But because of that reason, my cardio was never an issue growing up. Don't, don't ask me to run now. Right? <laughs> right now, my cardio my cardio sucks. But no, but it was from that age that he installed in that. And then up until high school, I was playing all um, different sports. Um, but I, I found that that kind of uh, push always also led me to pushing hard into my education into my studies. It was all just kind of that repetitive um, that inst inst instilled me from a young age. It wasn't just from sports. So um, yeah, that's basically where we're leading up to, to high school. Yeah. So um, outside of your dad, uh, during your childhood, uh, Taylor, were there any other positive role models or influences in terms of maybe teachers or coaches or anything that you can think of? Or was your dad really that strong influence and force in your life uh, when you're younger? Uh, definitely my dad too. I mean, like, like both my parents, I mean, my mom used to do Taekwondo, a whole family used to do Taekwondo together. Uh, my aunt and uncle, um, they owned the Taekwondo gym and he was the head instructor. So I guess partially him, him my uncle as well, which is my dad's brother. Um, he had a part, a part of it as well too, that he like helped, helped us push a lot. So it was like a whole family thing that we were always, we were always involved in something. We we're always playing soccer football or taekwondo it was it was always an activity happening it was one of those like i come home from i wake up in the morning do whatever cardio whatever i do and i come home from work i run from school i had to go either after school practice and from practice that to pick me up to go to after school like other practices and, and games and this and that and then i'd be doing my homework in the middle of between so i was always that kid that i was always busy with sports i was playing running around everywhere um which was it was honestly, it was, it was great. Like, I actually, I actually kind of miss, miss playing sports like that. So it was awesome, but yeah, definitely. Uh, my dad was definitely the, the, the number one, but I uh, definitely said like my mom and my uh, uh, close family were definitely part of it as well. Beautiful, man. That's, that's great to have a, a strong family unit like that growing up. So talk to me. Uh, you went to York university, got a degree in kinesiology. So uh, talk about your college experiences and uh, why you decided to study that. I'm assuming it's because you were involved in sports and you like sports I've got a bachelor's degree in exercise science. That's kind of why yes. I, I got my degree, but talk about college and talk about your education 
um, for, for a little bit, if you don't mind. Yeah. So actually funny enough, I early high school, I actually thought I was going to be uh, going to more for architect. Uh, Cause I actually used to love drawing designs and, and having that kind of aspect for, for drawing homes. Um, but then my, my dad actually made me do an aptitude test in high school, uh, which kind of, I don't know if it's, it's still around. I'm, I'm sure that probably still is basically to see what kind of career path uh, according to all these questions are. Um, and I think I came out to like an 80th or 90th percentile to like the health kind of field. So I was like, huh. So he so said, like, see, look, he's like, well, you can, you can, you could probably, cause my dad, my dad, obviously, especially being like fought parents, they're like lawyer, doctor, kind of like that kind of mentality. They don't know like the little small jobs and other opportunities. So my dad was like, see, it's at 80th percentile. He's like, you gotta be a doctor. So like, obviously in my head, I was like, okay, you know, med school or what had that thought process, whatever. So um, I took kinesiology in grade 12 and as a, as a course, and then I loved it. I'm like, wow, I'm like, this is it's something clicked. And I'm like, this is what I like. So then I switched career paths and I started looking into it and I, and I applied for different universities for uh, kinesiology. And then I got accepted and uh, any university still had the mindset of, okay, potentially med school and this and that. Then, my grades are awesome, and I'll never forget this. The first day of uh, university, it was like eight thirty in class. I'll still remember my prof's name, Professor Nan. He sat down in a classroom full of like a thousand kids. He's like, "All right, guys." He's like, uh, "Out of everybody here, who is planning to go to med school?" Everybody puts their hands up. He's like, "You're lucky if maybe one of you gets in." He's like, "You guys got to understand. There's more. There's more jobs than just becoming a doctor." So that kind of was, I was like, kind of hit me. I was like, oh, I didn't really look into it. So then started looking into it, started looking around, you know, getting more familiar with different opportunities. And I kind of came across uh, athletic therapy, which I had never heard of before. So athletic therapy, it was, I'm like, this is perfect. This is actually doing therapy with athletes. I'm like, this is something that I was looking into because I already kind of was looking at something with sport related anyways. So I'm like, this is awesome. I was actually the roommate that I was kind of with, she was in it. So I, I looked into it. I applied to the program. They were only accepting like 20 students per year. So I got lucky with the interview process. I got accepted and I'm like, okay, cool. I guess this is what I'm doing. And then I, I got, did my athletic therapy as long, along with my kinesiology at York. And then, um, and then from that aspect though, but even still with, uh, I had the idea, okay, maybe I'll work with a professional team or I didn't know what route I was going to go. Um, but because of my lifestyle with bodybuilding and training and like the, the, the hours and the food and the, everything we had to do, I realized the lifestyle that the, the, they would have to work with the pros traveling with the teams and you're on their schedule. I have, I like creating my own schedule. So I, by the time I finished university, I was like, you know what? I'm like, I'm going to have to build my own build business if I'm going to do that, because as much as I would love to do that, I, I need to, I need my own schedule. So I, I took it took a chance and uh, I was 24. I started my own business um, for Tips by Tay. And then I've been kind of trying to grow it ever since. And uh, I'm happy I made that decision because it's it's been it's been a great ride. It's been a lot of learning experience. Don't get me wrong, the last like four, four plus years, but uh, it's it's been awesome. So that that's so cool, dude, because uh, a lot of times uh, those of us that go off to college, we kind of, you know, graduate and then we kind of go into a, a quote unquote career path. And it's kind of like just continuing through the system. Right. Um, yeah. I currently, you know, own a gym and, and uh, definitely uh, my parents were entrepreneurs. So I really have that entrepreneurship within me. Um, and, and there's so much freedom within entrepreneurship. Right. So let's, let's talk about that. I want to talk about you, you graduate from college. You've kind of, you've played sports. You kind of know how to follow the rules and kind of do yeah. what you're supposed to do but there's not really a, a rule book or a blueprint, blueprint per se for entrepreneurship, right? For starting your own no, business. No, exactly, exactly. So, so, so I want you to talk, Taylor, about, I mean, you graduate from college. I mean, how, how do you start your own business, man? Because like, you know, you don't necessarily go to college to learn how to start no. your own business. So talk about that. Yeah, so honestly, it was, it was a lot of trial and error. Um, I actually started off with, well, I was, while I was in school, I don't know how I managed to do all this with the schoolwork. I was also full course load. Um, we're traveling with the sports teams. I was placed with different teams every year with the university. I was, I was placed with the varsity team. Uh, plus I was managing a gym and doing personal training. It was just hectic anyways. So once I finished that, um, I kind of built up the whole base of like personal training and I had to build a lot of clientele. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do my own thing with personal training. So I was doing a lot of in-home, in-condo personal training. And then as uh, I finished school, I, I kind of started introducing, all right, let me start doing the massage as well. 
um, it was a lot of trial and error and busting my ass and running around like like a like crazy because I had to try to juggle between now personal training clients and I wanted to start doing massage. So like my hours were everywhere. And then I remember that year I was also competing. So trying to compete, juggle this personal training, wake up in the morning. I'm, oh man, it was, it was, it was pretty hectic year. Uh, made it happen though, the, the slowly the transition and trying to get my name out there and then slowly start working on, because my, I, my figure was, I personally for like, I trained, I was like, I'm having a hard time finding someone that does what I do for myself. I'm like, I can't be the only one in the fitness industry or in the health, or whatever. So it's having a hard time finding someone that does deep tissue, that does everything that I do. So I'm like, okay, let me, let me maybe be the go-to guy or maybe pick a niche instead of just seeing, seeing the general population, maybe pick a niche and maybe that, that'll be a little bit better. So I'm, like, I'm already in the fitness industry. Let me, let me promote within it. So that's kind of how the approach that I did and not knowing that's probably a better, better idea to do that way anyways. So I started promoting within the fitness industry, treating a couple of pros, a couple of people here and there, and then using the social media platform, which obviously it's, it's been a trial and error of like how to, how to use it properly, but it's, it's helped huge and a lot of word of mouth. Uh, and then bit by bit, that's how you start learning. And then eventually I started shifting away from personal training and, and, uh, and muscle therapy took over. And then because of that, I still wanted to treat, I mean, help clients. So that's why I started promoting more online clients because I can, I can take care of more people that way. Uh, I didn't have time to do one-on-one. So now that's what I do full-time. I do uh, the massage therapy uh, and then I do the online coaching uh, as well. So. Excellent. So talk to me about uh, massage therapy. I, I compete in bodybuilding. I'm a huge proponent yeah. of, of body work, uh, chiropractic work. Um, I, I just, I think it's essential, especially if you're going to be a bodybuilder and going after muscle growth and you're, you're really tightening muscles and, and, you know, challenging muscles and ligaments and tendons in ways that they're not necessarily, uh, wanting to be challenged. So talk to me how you, how you got into massage therapy and, and what is that interest that kind of keeps you moving in that direction? Cause I, I'm actually honestly thinking about going to massage therapy school myself yeah. because I, I just, I feel like it's so important, especially within bodybuilding. So touch on that for a little bit, Taylor. Yeah. Well, like, like I said, I, got, I mean, I, I was trying to find a route of like where I can still keep um, the health and still connect with athletes. And I found this was, this was my route. It, it just clicked. Um, and, and it was like, Oh, this is perfect. I, I love it. Cause I'm like, I'm always, I was always trying to figure out stretching. I was always trying to figure out like in my aspect from growing up from, from doing martial arts and knowing stretching and doing this and, and having my dad always like from what he knew of like, all right, like we should do your warm up and do this and that. So it kind of a little, a little bit of installed already in me uh, with the importance of that in, in, in sports. Um, so when I took into this, it, it just clicked. It wasn't even like a question that I'm like, this is, this is something that I would love to do, but also, as I was in school, there was also a lot of, because they teach you the way they're supposed to buy the book and everything, but there's ways that I still find I, 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 I tweaked in my own method and, and, and created my own style, uh, which I don't think many people do very often. Um, I mean, I could be wrong. I know there's some people that do my style, but not very many people do the way, the treatment that I, the style that I do. I just found, I'm like, okay, I'm like, I like this approach, but I also found this approach that I like from someone else that I've been and I'm like, let me combine them together from the knowledge that I know from me training myself that I'm like, I know how this feels. I know how my hips feel. I know after a training or a big leg day, how my hips are going to be off or so on and so forth. So I'm like, let me use that knowledge of how I feel. And I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are feeling the same way, maybe even worse that I can relate to and connect the way when I treat them. Uh, and I find that that's, that's honestly been my, my strong point where I can connect to people and people can relate to what I, what I do. Uh, because we're, do, we're we're both doing the same thing. We're coming in. Someone's like, "Man, man, my my shoulders a little tweaked up, a little sore, whatever." I'm like, "I feel you, me too." <laughs> so I, I I get it. So like I I try to keep that in mind when I'm when I'm doing, doing therapy and uh um, and moving forward. Like I mean, still still trying to keep learning as as we go because it's it's something one of those one of those fields that are, there's always new evidence, there's always new methods and stuff that uh, that keep coming out. So um, yeah, it, it'll be it'll be something I'll be always always learning. Absolutely. So, so what is muscle therapy then like specifically? Um, so the term muscle therapy, I, I figured it was, it, it was more related to how I like to like teach it. Cause a lot of people, they hear muscle therapy. I mean, uh, they hear uh, massage therapy and they instantly they picture relaxation massage. So I didn't really want to go that route. And, and I'm, I did more of athletic therapy approach. 
So I'm I'm not an art, like I'm not a massage therapist. So I, when people get get the names confused, and I, I say athletic therapy, they still get confused. So I figured, let me muscle therapist kind of makes more sense or sport therapy. Uh, that way, they know they're not coming in for a spa massage. It's no spa massage. Uh, so basically, what I do, I incorporate it. I do a lot of deep tissue massage, um, a lot of grass and FST stuff, uh, fascial stretch therapy and some cupping therapy, all, at, all in combination in one, obviously depending on what I am that I'm treating. Uh, usually I combine all those types of uh, types and styles of treatment into one. Um, that's my method and how I find it, it it's been helpful. Um, it's it, it will be a little painful in certain areas because we do have to dig in. Uh, not to say like some people will come in, they're like, well, I saw you working on X Pro and I seen you digging your elbow in there. Well, you have to kill me. I'm like, it depends on the person. It depends on the size of the person. If you see these monsters, 300 pound monsters, like my little thumb ain't going to do much. <laughs> I need some elbows. <laughs> so, but yeah, it, it depends on the person. And I base it off of uh, how their, their body responds and how their fascia responds back to when I'm treating them. Um, but that's essentially in a small picture of what muscle therapy is. Um, I, I try to combine the different styles of therapy and, uh, and I find that works really well. Beautiful, man. So yeah. talk to me about, uh, because from my understanding, you your practice is out of Pure Muscle, or do you just work on a lot of the athletes there? Yeah, I have a, I have a clinic room there uh, at a Pure Muscle and Fitness in Burlington, and then I actually work here from home um, in Mississauga. So I have uh, the two locations that I go back and forth. Um, it's awesome there. It's 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 great because I mean, it's the perfect gym for the type of athlete that I'm trying to treat. That being said, too, it, it's, I actually kind of find it find funny sometimes. Some people message me or email me. Be like, hey man, I want to get some therapy done. He's like, because he's like, I'm not jacked. That can I still come see you? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, no, no problem. Like, I still treat anybody. It just, I just promote it in the fitness. Anyone that likes to be fit, anyone that I treat anybody. I, I, I don't, I'm not biased. It just so happens. I mean, as you promote within a certain field, you get the majority of like powerlifters, crossfitters, bodybuilders, like that are obviously fit coming in. Uh, because they see the the results right away of like them training five, six, seven days a week and they need, they're broken, right? Versus like the average person that just works in an office that like just needs the therapy every once in a while. So I still see anybody, but that's, that's essentially the areas I, I put myself in the areas where I, I find I've pre seen the most uh, of that kind of athletes. Very cool, man. So yeah. um, I, I, let's, let's talk about uh, bodybuilding, bodybuilding a little bit, your actual competing. So um, 2017, you said was your first uh, competition. Yeah, 2017 was my first competition. Yeah. Okay, so talk uh, about that first competition, and then why don't you just talk about your competition history, uh, and then up to the point where you just competed this last weekend, and uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. So actually, funny enough, I was gonna I was gonna do a show. I think it was in 2015 or 2016. Uh, a friend of mine, actually a friend of mine that when I started bodybuilding, he's like, you know what? I was like, I'll, I'll prep you for your first show. Me not knowing at the time what it really took to prep. Uh, I was in full course load. I was, I was managing a gym. I was traveling with the sports team and then thinking I can throw in a prep on top of that. Uh, and there was, there was so many issues at the time that it, it all just fell down. So I was literally about maybe three or four weeks out from, from that show. And I had to pull the plug. I'm like, man, I, I am going to have to pull the plug. I, there's way too much going on. I, my mind's not in it. And he's like, man, but we were in it. I'm like, I, I'm too competitive for my own good. I was like, I can't just do a show, just do a show. I can't just do, I'm like, I'm when I'm ready, once I'm, maybe I'm done my school next year. I was like, maybe I'll focus on it a little bit more. So technically I did a mini prep, but I didn't, I didn't compete at that point. It wasn't until 2017 was my official first show. Um, yeah, it was definitely very hard. I think the very first prep, official prep, it was hard because you don't really know what you're expecting uh, leading into it, like the the moods and the the hungers and how to how to deal with it and all that stuff. And uh, but it was it was a great show. Uh, I won my first show. Um, it was in Mississauga, the the Fuads, which qualified me at the time. There was provincials here, so that was 2017. So that qualified me for provincials. Um, and then that same year I, I competed in provincials and I got third, in my first provincials. And then I took, a, took a year off and competed in 2018, um, which was not a very good showing for me. I, 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 there was a lot of personal issues that happened leading up to the show. 
um, that ended up messing up with my prep. So I, I didn't end up doing that well in, in, in my first nationals in 2018. Um, then I took a nice two year uh, off season. I, I figured I needed to put on some size, um, work with the coach and was prepping for 20 for 2020. Um, but we all know what happened 2020 with the fun COVID and everything kind of got canceled. Um, so I was a couple of days out from my show, everything got canceled. So, I mean, it was frustrating. It was what it was, 20 week prep out the window. And then I, you know, went to hiatus. It was, it was what it was. We all had to figure out gyms and situations while we were in lockdown. Uh, so we made it work. And then that was, yeah, that was 2020. And then this year I was, wasn't sure if I was even gonna be able to compete again, because here in Canada, things are a little bit off with like lockdowns and what was open or not open. Uh, so once I kind of got the window, like, all right, I think, I think we're good. I think the shows are going to happen. Um, I started prepping and then, uh, I did Ottawa, uh, I had to recall there for nationals, but in Ottawa, uh, a couple weeks ago and I, I got first, I took the overall on that one and that qualified, qualified for, for nationals that just happened this weekend. And, uh, I was happy to get top four, uh, at nationals, uh, which was something that I, I was definitely hoping to get top five. So I was really excited to get the top four and get the requalification. Uh, it was my first nationals doing heavyweight because uh, I went up a weight class. So I just wanted to see how I compared against, against the big boys and see where I stood. And um, so I'm happy, I'm happy with the package that we brought this year and, uh, and now excited to get into a nice, good off season and see, see what happens for next year. Absolutely. Now. Uh, so you, you competed in heavyweight, um, did you, uh, is that the same division that, uh, Steven was in that, that was the overall winner? Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah same, same division. Yeah. So, yeah, so do you, uh, played. do you know Steven pretty well and stuff then? And, and what was it like yeah. competing against him? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I know him and we're, uh, we're on the same, um, same team with, um, uh, with, with muscle HD muscle. Uh, so yeah, I know him. We talk on Instagram. We like, we're, we're friends. So it was nice. It was nice to be able to actually, because I've never competed with him. So it was nice to be able to compete with him and, and see him. It was his time for sure. It was uh, it was a matter of time that he was getting his pro card. So I was excited to be able to actually be on stage just before and, and be there the day that he won his, his pro card. So it was honestly a pretty cool experience. And then seeing him compete the next day at the pro ranks, it was it was actually pretty cool. So uh, I can only can only imagine the feeling. Uh, but no, it was it was awesome. It was a uh, it was great to see a lot of the guys. And, and honestly, I. I mean, maybe me personally, but I, I feel like a lot of the guys backstage, everyone's super friendly, even though we're all competing against each other. Everyone's like, you know, good luck. Everyone's looking good. This and that. There's no like, you know, like hate or like everyone, everyone was pretty friendly for the most part at that point. I mean, you put it in the work, whatever happens, happens on stage. It's up to the judges at that point. So I, I found, I found it really nice. Very cool. So, uh, Justin Compton is your coach. Uh, how long have you been working with Justin? And then um, what, what has he kind of brought to the table for you as a coach and you being an athlete? Um, I started working with him just before I thought I, I started prep. Um, I'd probably say like end, near the end of summer, um, I started working with him because I reached out to him thinking, I was like, hey, I think I want to prep this year. I wanted to start a little bit early, just kind of like, you know, get, get your, get your um, Get him familiar with my body um and then from there we kind of decided on the show um and then we kind of went from there so i honestly i think it was really it went really well um he he understood my body pretty quickly and i was actually made some really quick changes uh because i was actually planning to do vancouver which is in in two weeks uh originally because i thought ontario was going to be in lockdown uh but once i found out ontario was still open we went from basically a 16 week prep down to a 12 week prep. So now we're like speeding things up and I, and mentally I was like, I think we can do it. But in my head, I'm like, I'm so used to doing 16 to 20 week prep. And I know how my, my body takes a little bit of time to like come, come down. So I was mentally nervous, but I was leaving it up to him. I'm like, I trust him. We'll, we'll, we'll follow the process and see what happens. Uh, so he brought me down really quick and, and, and everything kind of came in exactly how we wanted him. And, and it was by far my best look so far. So, I honestly have no, no complaints. So uh, what's the plans then going forward, Taylor? And then is your ultimate goal to get that uh, IFBB pro card? So yeah, moving forward, um, still waiting on the schedule. I think they haven't posted the schedule for 2022 yet, uh, but we roughly know roughly, I think when their shows are going to be. So 
I think I'm aiming for um, Canadian Nationals in November if they end up having it at that point, and then probably Olympia Amateurs. Um, I believe it's in December next year. Um, so around the November, December mark, probably do Nationals and Olympia Amateurs. That's probably what I'm aiming for. Just have a nice solid off season with him, uh, make the adjustments and improvements that we need to. Um, I find when you do too close to shows, unless like you're right there, you, you need time. You need time to, to grow, to, to make the proper improvements. Otherwise you're just showing up with the same package every time. Um, so that's, I think that's the game plan unless anything changes, but I think that's, that's what we're aiming for right now. Um, but yeah, I think uh, getting, getting a pro card would be uh, my end goal. And I'm not, I'm not in a rush to get it whenever I find that my physique is where it, where it should be. Uh, I feel like a lot of people are always chasing, chasing a pro card instead of trying to make their physique look like a pro. Um, and I'm in no rush. Like I'm, I'm more focused on trying to build my business and using bodybuilding as that aspect. If it takes me an extra couple of years, then it is what it is. My main focus is actually building my business because at the end of the day, once I'm competing, I'm putting a lot of emphasis and effort into that that like I shy away from, you know, business aspect for like a couple of weeks at least. So I can't be doing three, four, five shows a year trying to chase that pro card when, you know what I mean? I have to play it smart. So I think a nice, good, solid off year and then planning it for two back-to-back -back shows close to the end of the year would probably be a little bit smarter. Um, so yeah, that's, that's essentially my goal. Honestly, getting into bodybuilding at first, my main goal, um, if and whenever happens, getting getting a pro card, I usually I was planning on doing it more so as adding like another certificate against the wall. Like now, now I'm yes, I'm certified therapist. Now I'm a pro. It it just adds to my credentials in that sense. So like for me, that was my main purpose. If I end up going far with it, then so be it. But it'd be it'd be nice to add to my credentials because now having being an IVB pro muscle therapist that really knows the, the industry, like that just like puts me at one more level, right? So that's, I'm thinking of more business perspective. And of course I would like in the competitive aspect, that'd be nice as well. But uh, that's, that's where my head, my head kind of goes to. Yeah, no. And, and I, I respect that a lot, man, because if you're going to be in the fitness industry, um, I yeah. feel like you're going to gain a lot more uh, credibility. You're going to gain a lot more business um, if you, if you practice what you preach, right? So I, I think that's yeah. a very smart um, mindset that you have now in terms of training, uh, your training style, your, your training, uh, methodology, what, what does that look like, uh, Taylor? Um, I mean, I, I don't know how to, I guess I would state it, but I mean, a lot of, a lot of times I think I took a lot of methods from, uh, from John Meadows. Um, I, I'm, I'm more of like, I like, I kind of like volume, uh, style. I'm not more of like the Dorian Yates of like, I'm not too hard, hard and grainy like that. I like more, a little bit more volume. I've, I've been doing a lot more of build up to one, one hard set um, and then kind of go all out to that. I've been finding that was working a lot better that way. Uh, I used to do way too much volume, I think, growing up, like learning. Because I used to, I remember the first year or two, I'd be going in there doing every chest machine and every leg machine possible and then being there for two, three hours. But as you go, I realize like that's not necessarily important. Uh, it's the output that you put in in those couple of sets uh, that actually matter. And I, I've been seeing better progression that way. Um, and splitting and splitting up my days and splitting up my leg days and splitting up my back days, depending on what, what weaknesses I got to bring up. So that's something I actually got to sit down with coach and try to figure out how to split up my um, my split these next, next several months to bring up certain, certain weak points. Um, and then kind of be, the training, the training style, I mean, it, it doesn't have to change. It's no, it's no magic. It's whatever works for you like certain people they like the strength phase and they, and they need to do a lot of heavy heavy stuff some people it, it works for them some people the volume works better so you gotta you gotta find what works for you and at the end of the day if you're hating it you're not gonna do it you gotta find a style that you like and enjoy you coming in and, and it's fun right so it's uh it, as much as maybe one style could be potentially a little bit better but if you're hating yourself you're 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 not liking the style training you're, you're probably not going to come in and do it 100 percent for sure. So what are the, what are some of the areas on your physique that you are going to be focusing on bringing up in this off season? Generally overall, I think my body definitely has to catch up to my legs a little bit more. Uh, I think just broader shoulders, um, bigger lats and, and arms for the most part, obviously everything in general, I think needs to come up. 
Um, but essentially from, from looking at it and, and getting some feedback, definitely um, uh, the upper body lats, just, just having that better, better uh, taper uh, from the front and back uh, is definitely what I'm focusing on. Obviously a little bit of everything needs to come up, but those are definitely my weaker areas. My, like my arms, shoulders and, and, and lats definitely have to come up. Very cool. So talk to me, you mentioned uh, social media a little bit earlier, uh, Instagram, uh, talk to me how, um, you utilize Instagram specifically social media, uh, for business and how can some of the listeners maybe take social media, specifically Instagram and utilize that for, for their business. If they might be thinking about t-shirts or they're thinking about, you know, just a brick and mortar, whatever it is, how can, uh, how can we utilize social media as well? for a business maybe idea that we have? Yeah, I mean, it's it's been something and, and I'm still to this day, I'm still learning to be honest. I feel like this this social media world keeps growing and I'm, I'm still trying to catch up and learn and, and find new ways. Um, but honestly, just just sticking to a method and, and consistently posting, consistently having your name out there. The key the key is is, is brand, uh, brand marketing and having people just recognize, recognize, hear about it whether as simple as uh, what I find as simple as recording, making sure the client's okay, recording a video of them getting therapy, tagging them, because once you tag them, they repost it and all their friends see it. And it's a simple, simple process that way. And then it becomes a word of mouth because it's, it creates conversation because then the people see it like, oh, how is it? How was that therapy? It was great. It was awesome. Maybe look into it. And then kind of so on and so forth. And it just, just a, a simple, a simple story, a simple tagging somebody, a simple, Anything like that, I find like was I feel more people are, are watching stories than they are actually watch, looking at posts. So I, I focus more on, on the story aspect um, that I've been finding, or even getting good content, uh, doing good photo shoots, um, just just having basic something that people keep interested in, uh, and obviously eventually down the road having a good like um, something I build like, like, like uh, a good website, um, something that people can come click at, get more information. Things like that definitely helps along the way. But if you're starting off, like when I started off, literally have a name, have a little logo. If you don't have a logo, a brand, it's something that people can at least remember and just constantly post it on your story, having people repost it and then basically putting it in the people's faces that they remember. Because at the end of the day, people just remember it right away or they'll see it and then and then they'll they'll remember to come to you. So I, whether it's, I don't know, like muscle therapy, whether it's your own business, whether whatever people are doing, I find, it's definitely the new way. If you're not jumping on the bandwagon of social media, you're missing out huge. Uh, and there's so much more that I still got to learn. I got to sit down with a couple of people that I know uh, that are going to be helping me out just to expand even more on the social media aspect. Because uh, there's obviously YouTube, TikTok, all this stuff that I'm still, I understand it, but there's still way more things that I got to learn. So um, there's always room for growth, but definitely, definitely the, if you're starting your own business, you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not using social media, that's for sure. Very wise words. So what's your ultimate goal, Taylor, in regards to uh, your business and kind of some of those business aspirations that you have? Um, honestly, as I go, I kind of, I have certain ideas. I think I eventually would like to open up my own spot, my own clinic um, and, have, um, and have it run that way. But I also, I kind of, I kind of want to see where things go. Cause I mean, I, I know it's, it might sound stupid, but people are always asked like, what's your, what's your five-year goal? What's your, this goal? And I, I think that's, that's important, but I also, I'm also one that, that kind of goes with the flow and see where, where, where opportunities open. Because if you would have asked me five years ago, where you would have seen me, like, I wouldn't have said I'm working at Pure Muscle Fitness. I'm doing this. I'm working with pro bodybuilders. I would have thought of, I'd be working with the sports team, like traveling with them. Right. You know what I mean? So I kind of go with where, where the opportunities goes, where, where my, my world goes at the same time. But ideally, it would be nice to own my own clinic, own my own facility, um, and kind of grow from there and have uh, certain therapists kind of work under me, with me, in that same similar style, with their own touch, of course, and we all kind of have the same uh, method. Um, that's That'd be the end goal at some point, um, to have that, be able to, to run to run facility under under tips by Tate and then uh, and having a lot of therapists. I have a lot of therapists that actually have reached out and, and asked me uh, to help them with, with my method of, of treatment. So I, I thought about it, I'm like, you know what? Like if, if there's enough interest, it would be, it'd be nice to have like a little, you know, like coaching seminar or, or something to be able to teach a couple of therapists to do similar styles that I do and have them all work under one facility. Obviously they bring their own, 
their own touch and their own styles into it as well. And then we kind of grow a facility that way. It'd be nice. For sure. Where, where did uh, tips for Tay, where, where did that name come from? I was trying to, I was trying to figure that out with, with your emails. Like me, I was like, where, where did this one come from? Obviously Tay, I'm assuming is short for Taylor, but yeah. tell me about that yeah. name. Honestly, it actually, funny enough, it was actually uh, an ex-girlfriend of mine, one of her best friends. She was always, oh, we're always at the gym and she was always like, hey, Taylor, what do you think of this? Hey, Taylor, how do you think of that? How do I grow my glutes? How do I grow my that? Just, oh, like they're always asking. I always have friends asking me. And then I was always helping them out. Okay, you should do that exercise. You should do this. And then she kind of threw it and I got a joke. She's like, she's like, oh, she's like, I'm always getting tips by Tay. And I'm like, I kind of like, oh, I kind of like, kind of like this. I kind of stuck in the back of my head. And then like a year or so, so later when I was thinking of business names, I'm like, you know what? I actually kind of like that name. So I kind of stuck with it and, and kind of rolled with it because it's, it's more personal. It's not. So I was trying to think of like, you know, muscle therapy or like massage. It, it's very, it's very generic. And, and that one kind of just stuck out because it's more me. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to roll with it. And uh, it's kind of stuck. So it's nice. That That is cool. I mean, I, I love, yeah. uh, I love the stories behind uh, the brand. So um Outside of, uh, you know, business life and bodybuilding, um, I saw from your Instagram, you have a significant other. Uh, what do you guys yeah. like to do for fun? Is there anything that you do to kind of keep yourself um, in that, that leisurely state? Um, you know, let your guard down a little bit, relax. What, what does that look like for you, Taylor? Honestly, we, 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 we like to have a nice balance. I, uh, we really like the, um, uh, we like to go out. We like to go eat. Uh, we like to travel sometimes. We went to, we went to Vegas, like, a couple of weeks ago, just kind of de-stress, and even though I was in prep, we went, we went out. We uh, we like going to concerts a lot, like uh, uh, EDM, electronic kind of music. That's kind of like our go-to. Um, that's more of an like an escape of like the world and, and having a good balance between working hard because we both work really hard. Uh, but you can't go 100% all the time. You need you need an escape. You need you need to have some balance. Go to movies. Go away. Do something. Um, Otherwise, like I, I, I wouldn't be able to put it in my 100%. I'd be burning out too quickly. Um, some people think I might be crazy for like, you know, having my fun doing this, doing that. But it's what keeps me sane uh, and what keeps me going. Because otherwise, if, at the end of the day, we're, we're young. I don't have any kids yet. Like right now is the time to still be able to travel, be able to have some fun whenever we can. Um, so that's that's where I, I find the good balance. If, if not, then I, I'd be miserable if I'm in my 20s 30s working all for everything and, and not not enjoying our youth too like we need to be able to to have a, a nice a nice balance that way and plus once once we have kids too like I mean at that point I, so I still think it's important for people to go out and have fun whether it's going to movies going for dinner traveling doing all that stuff like I think people once they once they hit that wall it's like you know no more fun no more no more having you're, you know, fun with your partner and doing all that kind of stuff. But I, I, I think we're, we'll be okay. We're doing a test trial right now with the, we got a puppy. <laughs> He's uh, six months now. Uh, so doing a test trial with that one before we, we think about having kids. So <laughs> that's awesome. And I love that. So we're going to uh, wrap it up here in a few minutes. I want to touch on a couple more things. Um, in, in, and this is kind of goes to, uh, uh, you know, uh, tips by Tay, but um, a lot of times, you know, as a gym owner, um, a lot of people within uh, bodybuilding and, and uh, kind of that world, you see people walk into the gym, right? And they, they, they don't warm up. They, they, there's, there's nothing going on except for they walk over to the barbell bench, they throw on 225 and they start repping it out. And for me, just knowing, it's you know, so especially, especially as we age, right? Like you're, you're just asking yeah. to, to, to mess your body up. So um, what are some suggestions that you have, Taylor, for warming up the body, getting the muscles, the brain firing before you start engaging in physical activity. Yeah. So what I, I tell a lot of people and, and I tell them, listen, I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say that you should stretch immediately after your training and do all this craziness because I personally don't always stretch after my training. But what I will say is if you're going to spend five, 10 minutes doing something, I prefer someone to do it before the workout. And for the aspect of if you're coming in and you're stiff, you're immobile, you have issues rotating whatever and you're going to go train you're either going to make it worse or you're only strengthening your body in that awkward uh, posture so you're if to have an effective workout i'd rather you spend five ten minutes foam rolling i like foam rolling um doing the bike to warm up a little bit foam roll 
and uh, doing some rotational movements, some stretch, some dynamic movements, kind of move, uh, stretched. Uh, I like using bands quite often. Um, and then doing a lot of pre-core activation, which I find a lot of people don't do enough. Think of core as like a, an exercise to do uh, during the workout, at the end of the workout. I actually like doing it before, more of like a pre-activation. And that's actually saved a lot of people uh, from lower back and I saved myself from lower back issues because a lot of the time we come in, we, we think we have hardcore, we, we do all this stuff, but realistically our core is not just our, our abs, it's, it's, it's our whole midsection, everything in combined. So when we're doing all these exercises and bracing, a lot of people have these bad backs and they're trying to squat and, and nothing is holding them except for maybe the belt. That's when they start tweaking all the time. So I tell, tell people do a couple of sets of ab exercises, maybe some vacuums as part of their warm up, and your brain will actually have that mind to muscle connection of keeping everything intact, and it'll actually save your back a bit. So there's a lot of issues depending on what what you're training. You're training lower legs, obviously, you open up your TFL, your glute med, uh, your hip flexors. If you're training upper body, I'm huge on shoulders. If your shoulders aren't warmed up, no matter what upper body exercise you're doing, everything goes through the shoulder shoulder joint. So arms, leg, I'm sorry, arms, shoulders, chest, back, whatever it is that you're training, having that range of motion, doing dynamic movements, um, making sure uh, the, the pec is opened up, the lats are opened up. Um, that'll be huge. So you actually have, for one, better range of motion, but you'll actually have a better workout in general. Like you'll actually have better pumps, but you'll notice like with the fascia is too restricted and you're not open up enough, like the pumps are actually insane once you're actually getting in there. The range of motion is good. You won't feel the cracking and the, and the pinching uh, throughout the workouts. Um, so I find just keep it consistent. A good five minutes before a workout isn't that crazy. Uh, I see people trying to do the, the, the arm swing before they go to your chest and then thinking that's a good enough warm up and they, they start one, two, three, four plates. And I'm like, I start cringing. I'm like, that's going to just end up being a tear. I just show up with my business card. <laughs> just kidding. But uh, no, but seriously, it's, it's, it's something that I, I see often. And I tell people, at least if you can spend five minutes, start with five minutes, do some foam rolling, do some band activation stuff. You'll thank yourself later because like, you might not feel like right now, you might think like you're invincible right now, but down the road, it's going to catch up and then something tweaks and something pulls and tears. And at that point now, now you're dealing with uh, an injury instead of preventing it and, and having an effective workout. So Excellent. So um, talk to me a little bit about um, hydration. Is that really important in terms of um, keeping, uh, you know, the muscles pliable and preventing injury? Or is that something that's a little overrated? No, hydration. I think hydration is huge. Hydration is, is one, of, one of many reasons why people have, have ish, uh, uh, injuries. Not many people think that they're actually drinking enough water. People think they're drinking enough water, but realistically, it's not. Uh, it's actually sad to see when I, when I hear some clients they're, they think drinking one to two liters of water in a day is sufficient. And I'm like, there is no way, maybe you're not even calculating properly. You're, you're probably not even getting the full two liters, but I, that is no way. And, and, and you're expecting to be training five, six days a week. Like that's not, that's, that's not good for one, your, your body and you're dehydrated and you're doing yourself a disservice. Uh, your muscles can't function properly that way. Uh, that along with like electrolytes, maybe not having enough sodium in your body, it, it just it, everything everything plays a role like it's it's that's why this sport i find is the most unique and most complicated sport at the same time because it's not something that you can just put some cleats on and go run around play football or soccer or go get a basketball shoot for a couple hours and, you, and you're done the sport this is fitness and bodybuilding it's something that's it's what you eat every day it's it's your hydration it's if you didn't sleep enough that day you're just going to throw off your training it there's so many aspects and, and something that you got to be consistent all the time. Uh, otherwise your body will respond in a certain way and, 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 and it can make big, big changes. So if someone's taking this seriously, yeah, hydration is huge. Excellent, man. All right. What uh, has bodybuilding taught you, Taylor? Honestly, bodybuilding, I would say the number one thing is probably uh, discipline. Uh, discipline. I mean, it, I, I mean, I wouldn't say just bodybuilding taught me that. I think I, I started learning that from a young age, but even more so because of the level of discipline that you need to have in bodybuilding, it's, it's definitely discipline in, in everything. Uh, it's helped me with discipline, with bringing that into my business, discipline with relationship, discipline with like a lot of things, to be honest, because if someone can go through a prep and a proper prep, you can pretty much do a lot of things because if, if you're able to get your mind to sacrifice to, to make like uh you know the commitments to certain things and the discipline of work and everything 
you can put that same energy into into other aspects of your life. So I, I find it's it's very uh, as much as hard as, as as prep is, it actually benefits you in learning that you can actually put yourself in and push yourself past boundaries that you never thought you could do. Um, so I, I find not just not just encourage people to do it, show it just for that reason, but like even just to do a, a mock prep to just to feel even for a photo shoot just to feel what that aspect feels like because it's it's a lot of work and it's, it's a lot of discipline that, that goes into it so i feel like you learn a lot from it and and you you learn yourself what you can actually accomplish because sometimes people are like i don't think i could do that i don't think i could give up doing certain things for a week or two i don't think if you, if you actually like push you you're able to do a lot more than you, than you think your body can go through a lot more yeah so I, I think i think i think definitely uh definitely that that's this one's probably the best one Yep, for sure. All right. So Taylor, we're going to wrap it up here, man. Um, I kind of want to give you the opportunity um, and the platform just to share any final thoughts, any final words that you might have for myself and uh, the listeners. And then um, if people are uh, in the in the Toronto area where you're located, where can they reach out to you if um, they want to just connect with you on social media? Uh, uh, so share where your social media is at, uh, website, any sponsors, anything like that after you share your final words, final thoughts, uh, go ahead and, and share all of that information as well, please. Well, first, I just want to thank you, Quentin, for, for having me on. Uh, I was looking forward to it, so it was awesome. Um, honestly, if anyone in the GT area wanted to reach out, they can either check me out on, on my Instagram at uh, tipsbytay uh, or my website, tipsbytay.com. Um, you can DM me or email me at any, any of those, uh, those platforms. It's probably easiest. I can get back to you pretty quickly um and yeah it's, i mean i'm actually i'm actually i haven't really announced it or said anything yet but i'm actually planning potentially going to the arnold's in march um probably for the week uh, i'm gonna be having a room there just to work on a lot of athletes leading up to the arnold's uh me and a friend of mine might be going down from uh, from the states so if you're in the arnold's that week and and look you need, need a therapist I'll probably be there that week uh, lead, treating all the athletes and, uh, and all the pros around that area too. So I think we might be co- incorporating some of that too to come down to the States for big events like that to try to help other athletes and to try to get my name out there too for that. So uh, I might potentially be doing that. So um, that's another option as well. But yeah, if you're in the, in the GTR area, that's probably your best bet is, uh, is uh, my Instagram or uh, my, uh, my website. Awesome. Thank you so much, Taylor, for coming on. I greatly appreciate it. Okay. I appreciate you for having me on. I, uh, I had a good time. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, all of you who are uh, listening to uh, this episode of Behind the Muscle Podcast, I just want to say thank you so very much. Um, I greatly appreciate you guys checking out this episode and continuing to support Behind the Muscle. Just a few quick things I'd ask of all of you. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button on Behind the Muscle Podcast YouTube. Uh, that's really crucial because I release all of these episodes first on YouTube and then distribute them throughout uh, all the other podcast platforms. And then also, if you are on YouTube, hit that like button and please leave a comment or any feedback that you would have in the comment section. I really greatly appreciate your guys' comments and your feedback. And then one other favor I'd ask of all of you, please take uh, Taylor's episode of Behind the Muscle podcast, share it on your Instagram stories and make sure you tag Taylor and tag behind the muscle so that we know you guys listen to this episode specifically and found great value in this episode. And then finally, I will leave you all with this. Remember behind the muscle, there's always a story. We'll catch you guys later.